All right, so this is genetics video two, and it's about incomplete dominance and codominance. Um, it would be really convenient if one allele was always dominant to another allele, but it turns out that's not always the case. So there's a pattern of inheritance called incomplete dominance in which heterozygous individuals have a third trait that it's a blend of the other two traits. So on occasion, you'll see it referred to as blended inheritance if you look at the internet. So the classic example that textbooks like to use is um, in Andalusian chickens. So black feather color is incompletely dominant over white feather color, and the heterozygous individuals have kind of a bluish color. Now, we don't mean a bright blue, but like if you've ever seen a Russian blue cat, it's a kind of a grayish blue color. So if we cross two blue Andalusian chickens, that means both of them are heterozygous, then when we cross those, the offspring can either be big B, big B, big B, little B, or little B, little B. So the genotypes and the ratios are really similar. So the genotypes, it's still a one to two to one ratio of big B, big B, big B, little B to little B, little B. But what's different now is the phenotypic ratio. You no longer have the three to one phenotypic ratio that you do if one allele is dominant over the other. You have a one to two to one ratio of black to blue to white. Um, and again, remember that blue is not bright blue by any means. And we, so we've included a picture to kind of show you the kind of grayish in-between color. In contrast, codominant traits, um, both alleles are expressed. So it's not really a blending of the two, um, but both, both traits show up at the same time. So coat color in shorthorn cattle is the classic example that most books use. And um, hybrids or heterozygous individuals have what we call a roan coat, which means that there are some patches of kind of this reddish brown and patches of white. So both genes are expressed and you don't really have a blend of the two like some sort of a beige or a tan or an in-between color. You just have patches that have different colors. So if we cross a roan bull, and the gametes that the bull produces, the males always go across the top. And a red cow, and you have the red down the side, um, you would get a 50-50 chance of having a red offspring versus a roan-coated offspring. You could not get white-coated offspring. Now, you might notice that the notation is different with incomplete dominance. Um, with incomplete, not incomplete dominance, with incomplete dominance, if we go back to this previous slide, we still use the upper and lower case letters. There are times where um, you'll see people use two different letters because one isn't really dominant over the other. And that's fine if you're doing a monohybrid with incomplete dominance, but we're going to be doing dihybrids with incomplete dominance and having four different letters would get really visually confusing and hard to follow. So in our classes, we always use the uppercase and lowercase letters, even though one trait isn't truly dominant or recessive over the other. But with the Roan um, cattle, with codominance, you use a um, uppercase letter for both alleles and then a superscript with two different um, letters. So the R stands for red and the W stands for white. And by the way, just it should be noted that this is obviously not a bright red color that you're used to, but kind of an auburn color, a brownish red. So the genotypes and ratios of this offspring, you'd have um, CRCW to CRCR in a one-to-one -one ratio. And the phenotypic ratio would be roan to red in a one-to-one -one ratio. So with codominance and incomplete dominance, the genotypic ratios and phenotypic ratios are always the same as one another.